sex if I want to be allowed to experiment with spirituality and, you know, flutter along. And so things become very conditional, a lot of control. Of course there's frustration and unhappiness because you're going in opposite directions. You are not being in integrity with who you are. And there is this critical, this judgment. Not only are they being critical and judgment of you, you're being critical and judgmental of them because they're not conforming to what you need them to conform for you to be okay being you. Mm -hmm. So we are split. There is a frustration. We are literally two different people. Mm -hmm. There is the me that I want to be in a relationship, but I won't allow me to be because if I'm this, you might leave me. So I'll become this so that you will stay with me. And then we get into, again, more, they can't be supported because there's so much condition. Like, I have to give up part of who I am to get you to like me. In fact, a lot of it was, when you think about it, when, I, when you're talking about like this, it's almost like acting, because mm -hmm. I really wasn't being true to who I was. So now let's take this one step further. Where did this come from? Because this is what you used to control the relationship. In the relationship, we behaved based on our old patterning because we somehow got programmed to believe that this is what we needed to do to get what we wanted. So we were just reacting. Where did this come from? So go a step further. Who programmed? Oh, this is my mother and my father. Okay. My father was very, very controlling. Okay. So from mother, father, you learned that relationships were heavy responsibility. You learned that everything had to be conditional. Um, you had to give in on some things if you wanted to get others. Again, everything, control, condition. And because it's so controlling and conditional, no wonder it's frustrating. And how can joy and spontaneity show up in a relationship that is conditional and it's causing people to not feel okay? No wonder you're gonna split up. The critical, the judgmental begins to seep in when we begin to notice that what they're doing is, is keeping me from being okay. Mm -hmm. So here's gonna be opportunity for you. Bring to mind this past relationship mm -hmm. and just see him right there in your mind's eye. Have him there and let him know that your love for him became a responsibility because you wanted to be responsible about creating love the way you thought would be the right way to have a relationship. And let him know that you were conditional in how you were in this relationship as it pertained to respect because that is what you had learned from your parents. Respect is conditional and that you did certain things because you had to, not because necessarily you wanted to, because is what you learned from your parents. And let him know that you practice controlling him because is what your parents modeled for you. And look into the space that your fun and your play was conditional and you used it as a way of manipulation because that is how when you were little you could only play when you behaved a certain way. You could only have fun if you did certain things. That's how your parents conditioned you. And that there was frustration and unhappiness and there couldn't be balance and harmony because growing up, that's what you got conditioned to with your parents' relationship. And that inside of you there was an a desire to connect with your spirituality. There was a desire to live from your greatness, but because your parents didn't take the time to point out what was great about you, you could only point out what was not because it's what was done to you. And that from a place of being supportive, you didn't know how to be supportive because your parents were not supportive of you. How does that feel? That feels much better than this. <laughs> okay. So we pick up the conditioning. We're told that who we are is not okay. No wonder we meet a mate and we, told it, we tell them that who they are is not okay because they begin to be whoever they are and it begins to show who we really are and then who we really are 
reminds us of our parents telling us that that was not okay. So now I want to take it one step further. This is what you want. This is what you have as a pattern. We just recognize that it came from parents. Now let's go back one step. Let's go back to the beginning. I came in a wonderful loving being who can create love, who can, who respects, who looks for relationships where I can have fun and play. Part of that is great sex. Who we will be, we will experience balance and harmony. We will, we will help each other remember our spiritual greatness and we will be supportive with each other all the time. That is who I naturally am. But I came to forget that that's what I could have. So I created relationships that didn't have that to give me the opportunity to experience the contrast. Thank you, him, for showing me where I did not live from my authenticity because I operated from my programming. So now I am reprogramming myself to recognize that who I am is okay and I want to live from my truth. So feel into that. If you are authentic, can you respect anybody for however they are? Yes. Do you need anybody's respect? If you are authentic, is great sex part of what you can have because it won't need to be manipulated? Yes. If you are authentic, do you think you're going to be able to attract the perfect companion yes. who needs nothing from you because he too will be authentic? Mm -hmm. If you are truly authentic and living from a place of your knowingness, that you are a creative, playful being, can you play and have fun? Yes. And in that space, can you create balance and harmony in your life? because there's nothing you need from the other person because you're going to be whole and complete in your authenticity. And now there's an equally yoked partnership that can, that can dance in that space. Will that allow you to be able to see their greatness? And that at moments that you forget your greatness, they will mirror for you that greatness because the relationship will be based on authenticity. You're both already great no matter what. Can you see how supportive that would be? then you're going to get the love that you want because you will be the love that you want. It will show up. Sure. Of course. See, this cannot show up because inside there's a programming that says, ooh, love, you know, relationships, control, responsibility. I want the joy and freedom of a relationship, but, oh, it brings responsibility and it's hard and tough and controlling. So I may not move into a responsibility that I want, because I have a programming that says they were controlling and I couldn't be myself. So we're sending a split message to, to, to the universe. I want this, but I might get that because that's what I remember. And the way to reprogram our minds is to look at the relationships where we did in the past, the thing that we don't want done to us in the next one. And a recognition, I did what I did because I was programmed to do that by the people who modeled what relationships were like for me. Totally. And you, if you take it back, generation past generation past generation, and forgive everybody for passing down only what they knew, because it's all that they knew. Thank you for playing. <laughs> Was that helpful That's for helpful. you? Yeah. What, what did, if you don't mind sharing, what was the insight from just going through this exercise? Just being cognizant of the fact that I have to take responsibility for the things that I really did in the relationship. I, you know, we always put it on the other person, but it's not the other person. It's always starting from us. And knowing that these are the things that really, maybe I never expressed, but I felt them. And those were the habitual patterns that became the natural way that you behaved because it was a default programming that everybody that you grew up with did. Right. So to deliberately change the habit is to remember that who I am already is capable of doing what I want. I just need to be mindful that I don't let the programming, the old programming get in my way. And this programming will only take over 
if you resist looking at it as something that you brought to the relationship because it's all that you had to bring to the relationship. If you had different programming, you would have brought that. Thank you for doing this. Do you know how we are? I would, I'm going to guess that every person in this room, when you get up in the morning and you get ready to get dressed, you open up your closet and you have a whole bunch of things to wear. Everybody here has at least more than one outfit, I hope. Yes. So you stand there in the closet and you look at all your shirts, you look at all your pants, your dresses, whatever it is that you have. And you decide, which one do I want to wear today? Which one do I feel like wearing today? And don't you grab that one and put it on? And it feels good. You picked your outfit. And I've changed them too. And, yeah. And you change them if, if after you put it on, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. We are very picky about what we put on. When we go to a restaurant and, and you have a menu, aren't you picky about the dish you're going to order? You're very picky, 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 picky. I want this, but not this. And I'll take this. And then they come out. Well, I'll have... I'll have the grilled salmon, but I don't want it grilled. I actually want it pan fried. And I know that the salmon counts with mashed, mashed potatoes, but instead of mashed potatoes, I'll take carrots. Yeah, right, you're ordering from the menu. Our beliefs are, we get to pick them like we pick our clothes. We would never go out of our house putting something on that our mother picked for us when we we're 45 or 35 or 25. We wouldn't want to do that. But yet we walk out into the world and we're operating from beliefs that our parents picked for us. Beliefs that somehow I'm not good enough. Beliefs that somehow, you know, for other people to accept me, I must control how they are. Beliefs that keep us behaving like little children in relationships instead of fully showing up as an adult that can meet them and recognize, I don't need anything from you because you don't need anything from me. I'm already whole and complete as I am. So when we get as picky about the beliefs that we are thinking that are causing us to have the experience that we're having, we will continue to have our parents pick our beliefs for us. And if you don't let your parents pick your clothes, why in the world would you let your parents pick your beliefs for you? Because what you believe about a relationship was modeled to you by your parents. And if your parents had a wonderful relationship, there might have been somebody else that you saw. Maybe it was the parents of a friend. Maybe it was the parents of your ex. Maybe it was you watched it on TV. Maybe you saw what was one of those dysfunctional shows? Roseanne. <laughs> and you saw how they had, how they create a family. But you watched it through repetition. You saw it again and again and again. And that became the model by which you create relationships. So if you are not deliberately choosing what you want to bring to the table in any, any relationship, whether it be personal, intimate, um, business-wise, relationship with money, relationship with your health, from a place of knowing that you are already whole and complete, you just happen to play the human game and kind of picked up other people's ideas about who you were, who you were not, and you deliberately want to live from who you really are, you will continue to be reacting to situations from a default mechanism. You will default to what was comfortable at one point and sometimes being comfortable is pointing out at what's wrong with you so that I don't have to look at what's wrong with me. Because I learned when I was little that when people pointed out what was wrong about me it hurt and because I don't want to look at that stuff I'm going to point it out in you because as long as you're hurting then I don't have to. And it's a crazy thing that we do. We want to hold everybody else responsible to change so we don't look at where we gave away our power. We took on what others said about us and we began to believe that. So take on what you want to believe about yourself. Repeat it enough until you become that. It's crazy stuff. Crazy. This is what we need to look at to move past it. If you want to create this, we got to get past the fear of our perception of relationships. The fear of not having children, the fear of not meeting the right one, the fear of losing my freedom. Until you look at what those fears are and face them, you're going to be repeating the exact same thing because that's at the level of vibration that you are operating from. And you're not, if you're needy, you're not going to find somebody who's whole and complete wanting to be in relationship with you. 
I mean, you may be able to, they might buy you a drink or you may have great sex with them one time. But the minute they feel from you that you're making them responsible and they're whole incomplete, they're going to say, sorry, Charlie, this is not for me. So if you don't want to repeat the relationships of the past, you got to look at your programming. Just this little exercise, what did this do for you? Any insights? Um, yeah, lots of, yeah, lots of insights in that. I mean, the spots on <laughs> You don't have to go into the details of it, but yeah. can you see some patterns? Can you go beyond this last relationship into past ones? Oh, well, the parents' thing is actually what they used to say. Okay. So in this past relationship, you can see how your parents' programming definitely contributed. Well, in every relationship, that was the, that was the messed up pattern. So you I thought? I finally saw. Yeah. I knew there was something going on, but I didn't know what. Like I told you earlier. Mm -hmm. I finally saw where I found it from. So you thought you were married to her, but you guys were in a four-way relationship. You and her were married to your mom and dad's beliefs. Too. And hers too. Yeah. Her and mom and dad's. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. So that is a given that hers were there too. Yeah. So we'll just talk about yours because you can't do anything about her beliefs, but you can about yours. So next time you go into a relationship, you have to leave your parents out of it. <laughs> <laughs> a menage well, a quattro. <laughs> <laughs> and have your own relationship. Any insights for you in seeing this exercise? I, I, was, I was already pretty clear. My, my 24 year old girlfriend pretty much made me clear that she wasn't my mother. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Someone 11 years younger than you kind of schooled you. And see, and here's a beautiful thing for all of us. The people that we held responsible for not giving us the joy that we wanted were a gift from life, from source itself, mirroring back to us what we couldn't see on our own. So the relationship becomes the gift that says you are operating out of your old beliefs. You are not living into your greatness. You are behaving like a child. You are not acting you know, like the mature person that you think you are. You're not being that because the energy inside of you is still behaving like how we were when we were around our parents. And this is part of this spiritual journey. Forget the spiritual journey. Just without a spiritual journey, most humans on their journey are operating out of this this um, wounded little child inside you can go okay so here let's let's look at it at an obvious one in the news think of any politician who's been on the news lately how old are they behaving <laughs> like teenagers those are the old ones <laughs> very mature as we have made it up to teens <laughs> look at the people in Hollywood, the movie stars, that are on the news, at top of the news. Arnold, Lindsay Lohan, how old are they behaving? Look at heads of corporation, the Bernie Madoffs, the heads of Enron. How old are they behaving? Little bullies on the playground, selfish little bratty kids. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. On the human journey, we are constantly behaving like our wounded child, constantly. The spiritual journey is about parenting ourselves. It's about saying, mom and dad, you were supposed to give me what you gave me for me to recognize at some point that that is not true. What you saw is not all of me. What you labeled is not all of me. I am a whole and complete person and allow that little child that we are and that adult being vessel that now we have and bring peace and harmony get that that spiritual balance and harmony going I get to be playful and have fun and be curious it is okay to have play and have fun but I recognize that I'm a grown-up and I want to behave as one not losing my innocence not losing my creativity but at the same time 
acting from a place that is very deliberate. As an adult, I want to create adult relationships, and this is what that looks like. This is what I want to contribute, and you don't need to give me anything for me to be okay because I am in balance with the whole of me, an adult with a fun, childlike sense of wonder. And those two things together, bringing the human and the spiritual together, the child and the adult together, it's what allows us to have an amazing life where we don't need anything from anybody else, but rather we come into couplehood because we're here for the purpose of enjoying each other. Why do you think we have these bodies that have these amazing experiences that can do, whoa, crazy stuff, but that stuff really gets activated with another. I don't know about you, but kissing my hand is not as much fun as kissing my man. <laughs> so we're created to be together. But when we hold somebody else responsible to complete the half that we can't make up on our own, it's a recipe for more control, more discomfort, more pain, more suffering. Huh? The nightmare. The nightmare. Absolutely. Go back to the nightmare. Any thoughts or comments before we take a break? Let's take a break then. Okay. Hold all of that education together. And hold all the education from the other areas that I've been studying. Hold it all together and allow it, like really for me, to be self-expressed, fully self-expressed who I am, spiritual, human, all of it. And be okay with it and powerful in it, rather than just Okay, so I know this little piece. Okay, so let me go just do this just piece. This gave me the, the real being of a, being able to use all that doing to produce what I want to produce in my life. So it's, it's purposeful. Is that okay now? Yeah, I'm through panicking. <laughs> <laughs> Good. He's smiling. Um, you know, one of the things, even though I haven't done that program, but that I've gotten uh, from you and other people who have participated in that, there is a programming of information with which to go out and control the world. So we're going to become a superhuman, that there's nothing from the past. I've already cleared it. I speak this new language, and it's, it's all controlled with my language. And that's all well and good, and that provides a level of feeling in control. But until you recognize the spiritual aspect that we are not here to be superhuman, that we are here to be balanced, spiritual beings, spiritual human beings, we're still trying to control our circumstances with this new programming. Whether it's that program or another program or any program, if you just take what is offered here and you go out and you get reprogrammed with this information and you go out to try and control circumstances because this is what the power of awareness says you're supposed to do, <laughs> you're still going to stay in that nightmare. Anything that you utilize to control the world outside of you is living in the nightmare. Anything that you gain from all of these teachings and you utilize it to work on the inner world, you utilize it to come inside and, and take care of your own disturbances. Look at where do I lose my balance? Where is it that I give my power away? Now, I don't care what program it is. Now you're utilizing the essence of that for your wholeness, for your holy, for your becoming complete. Now you don't have to control anything outside of you because you have worked with what is inside. And that's the part that most people just do not get. It's and like the movie The Secret. They, it's all about external. That's why I like Michael Beckham. Because mm -hmm. you can just feel a little more spiritual essence. Absolutely. And, you know, whether it's The Secret or Eckhart Tolle, uh, it doesn't matter. You can t take the, the teachings of Jesus. You can take the teachings of Buddha. There are organizations that have taken the message that Jesus taught and turned it into something that has to do with control. We're going to control everybody out here. If you want to have what he has, you've got to come through this door. And you got, by the way, put something in the bucket as it goes by and then we'll let you know how you can have access to this. 
It doesn't matter what it is. Any message, no matter how wonderful it is, that it is used to want to control situations and circumstances outside of you, is not being used for the heart. There's nothing wrong with that, but it is not coming from a space of knowing that everything out here is okay. The only thing that's not okay is how I'm perceiving it because of how I believe. But you, you had asked something, um, made a comment about how we get these books and we go to workshops and we study and we're on this journey to get all this information and we spend 10, 12, 15. When I hear people tell me, I've been on this journey for 30 years, are you totally happy? No, but I've been on the journey for 30 <laughs> years. And I go, all righty then. <laughs> I know exactly what is happening. I know exactly why they're on the journey, why they're still seeking. And the only reason we seek is because we don't stop to look at what kept us from knowing who we are. That's all that it is. We just, there is something inside of us that is resisting going inside of us. Isn't that kind of funny? Something inside of us is causing us to look outside. It's ego. It's the ego. Our mind was programmed the minute we were born to believe that my source of power was out here and it began with our parents. They were in charge of our food supply, our love supply, our emotional supply, our clothing supply, our material supply. They were in charge of everything. So we began to believe from the get-go because we were supposed to forget we were all that. So we, would, we could become all this. And as we became all this that I am, I got to play the human game. And the people who don't go in to see the places where the disturbances lie cannot quell them, cannot put them at peace. So we want to be spiritual and we want to do all the workshops and, and sing Kumbaya but we can't enjoy the kumbaya because inside we're so uncomfortable. We must go in to the story that we created, the very story we don't want to look at. We must go in and make peace with it. And the fastest way to make peace with it is to recognize that it's all made up. It really is all made up. It got made up so that I could come and have the human experience. And I got the parents that I got, and I got the siblings, and the aunts and uncles, and the teachers, and the mean people, and the nice people. All of that was part of the play called My Life. And for me to have my life, I had to come in and have the experience. And when we reclaim our power, that this was all made up, so I'm going to make up something new, the very experience that we had that, was, that we don't want to look at, that was uncomfortable, is what empowers us to now do what we do want to do. Because as long as we don't go in there, we will continue to point the finger at it, and it will continue to be the bad thing. And as long as we're pointing the finger at it, we're stuck to it, literally. That finger pointing means I am stuck to that thing. I can't let go of it. We're connected. We're connected through a story. If you're connected through a story, again, remember earlier, let's use logic. If we're connected through a story, what would disconnect us from that story? Another story to put your hand on. The story of my greatness over here. But you can't have the story of your greatness if you're holding on to the story of what disempowered you. You gotta set the intention. Which story do I want to live from? And if I wanna create the story of a wonderful me, I gotta stop telling the story of the disempowered me. I gotta let it go. And the way to let it go is to recognize that it's just two parts of who I am. I'm the human part with all of the trials and tribulations and the wounding and all that. And I did that so I could be a human. But I'm also a divine being that wanted to be human to experience what I created. So there's a couple steps, very simple steps to regaining our wholeness. The first step is that we have to be ready. You have to be ready, and we all know when we're ready. There is, there, is, there is no way of not knowing when you're ready. When we're ready, the, the willingness to do the work is what drops the resistance. 
When we're not ready, we resist. So anything that we are resisting, we're just not ready for that. Can you force yourself to be ready? You can force yourself to be ready if you make a decision. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? You got to want to move forward more than we want to hold the past responsible for why we're not okay today. It really comes down to that. Because to move forward is to give up my story of why I can't move forward. Isn't that kind of interesting? To move forward is to give up the story of why I cannot move forward. So we find our motivation in how bad do I want to move forward? And that juices us up. And there's all kinds of sweet practices out there that I highly, highly recommend. You find the one that works for you. Sometimes taking a bubble bath and laying in the water and just saying, I, I love being supported by this water. I love how it holds me and allows me to just float here. I love being supported. Find something that supports you. Maybe it's to just go take a dance class and just, just move your body. Just allow the energy to move through you. Sometimes it is chanting. Sometimes it's, it's meditation. Sometimes it's walking in the woods. There is no right way. But we find the thing that allows us to be at peace with where we are right now. And then we begin to create a story that we prefer. We create a story with our words. In the beginning was the word. Our words have power. Before there was matter was an idea. Before there was an idea was a thinking. And that thinking is nothing more than beliefs. And those beliefs created our world. So if you want to change what is going on and you prefer something that, something different, you got to begin to think in a different way. So first we've got to have that readiness. Then we've got to let go of the resistance. The other thing we need to do is we have to look at the wounding. We gain our power from releasing the story on the woundedness. We cannot continue to hold mom and dad responsible for the fact that I'm not all, that I'm not whole. We cannot continue to hold other people responsible, the ex-spouse, the ex-boss, the ex, you know, government. <laughs> we cannot keep holding on to somebody else as being responsible for my pain because that is to give them power. So if we're going to become whole again, we got to take our power back from the people that we gave it to. And again, logic. I am not using my power because I'm holding them as the reason for why I'm disempowered. Oh, okay. I'm not going to keep holding them as my excuse for not, you know, for why I'm disempowered. I'm going to begin to use me as my excuse for being empowered. I just made that up and now I'm making something else up. So again, we move from that readiness, giving up the resistance, looking at the wounding. But when we look at the wounding, we need to take what do we learn from it? What was the lesson in the wounding? And the biggest lesson in the wounding is that I used that story to keep me from being myself. Because as a little kid, I believed what they said because I didn't have the maturity that I have today to recognize that they did the best that they could with what they had, like the example that you helped us illustrate up here with the relationships. We behave in relationship based on what our parents taught us or others taught us. So the looking at that wound is the learning from it. Oh, you taught me how to look for love outside of myself. Great, that was my lesson. I will feel diminished any time I look for love outside of myself. Because let me look at my past. Have I been feeling empowered? No, I keep looking for other people to help me feel whole. Look at my string of relationships where I help people responsible for my happiness. So what is my lesson? Don't expect somebody else to make me happy. Because I came in happy already. I just learned to be unhappy. Because unhappy people taught me that my happiness was outside of me. Because their happiness they thought was outside of them. Moving into this spiritual journey is, is looking at the truth. That's the truth that sets us free. I am already whole and complete. I don't need you to make me whole and complete. 
So when I know I'm whole and complete, I will attract, law of attraction works whether you're unconscious or not. Whether you're ignorant or you're completely aware, law of attraction is always at work. You will get, always, who you're equally yoked to. Because somebody who is complete does not want to be with somebody who's not. Somebody who is half full will zero in on somebody who's half full. Because a person who's half full of himself or herself and they are going to tell others what to do, will find the one who's half full and empty and depleted. And the bully and the victim will come together. Always, always, always. It's just the way that he is. If I'm feeling like a child, I'll get somebody who feels superior and feels like the parent. If I'm feeling like the parent, I'll find somebody who feels inferior and feels like the child, and we will come together. If I'm not okay with my mother, I will find my mother and I will marry my mother. <laughs> if I'm not okay with my father, I will find my father and I will marry my father. It just, we keep finding the very thing that is mirroring to us where we are not feeling complete. So that we can then, with awareness, recognize this is all part of a game. A cosmic game of hide and seek. Our magnificence comes in, it hides, and then we seek it until we find it. Then we disappear into the ethers and come back and do it again. Isn't that cool? We, we actually come and do this again and again and again. Kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> so after we get our lessons from it, after we begin to see how we gave our power away to others because it's part of the game, comes the acceptance. It's part of the game. My parents did what they did because it, it helped me see how I hold others responsible. I don't want to do that anymore. Let me just accept that they did the best that they could with what they had because this is just where they were. They were trying to control me with their own programming. So now I accept them as part of my reprogramming. I send love and light. I send unconditional love to them because it's the very thing that they need most because I experience what happens when somebody is conditionally loving me. It sucks the life force out of me. So I'm going to give them some love. I'm going to send it back to them. No matter where they are on their journey, I'm going to love them exactly where they are. I'm going to accept them exactly where they are. That is the recipe for wholeness. Let go of the resistance. That's the, that's the place to get ready. Go in there, look at the wound. Get your lessons from it. Accept that it happened as it happened and you return to wholeness. Yes, this is easier said than done. But when you have this awareness, you literally have a road map. Just because you go to the store and you buy a map on how to get from here to California doesn't mean it's, you're gonna get there like that, but now you know where you're going. So when you get off course, you know what to do to get back on course. When you get a little bit sidetracked into the story, now you know how to get back on the highway. Let it go. Create another story that supports you. And little by little, you work your way back to wholeness. You left your wholeness little by little. You returned to it little by little. And, and look at how, how this, this both sides develop. This is truly an emotional thing. We come in and through the people that we love, through the experiences that we have, we lose ourselves emotionally. And all that emotional stuff then leads to a mental story. So we go from emotional to mental, and then our body bears the brunt of it. When you're depressed, your body can barely function. All the illnesses are nothing more than the result of emotion, emotions that were not expressed properly they got caught up with mental stories and turned into physical discomfort. So, logic again. Pop quiz. If we're going to use logic to unravel this, we got to go through the body first. We got to get the body to feel at ease. If you got to have your drink, if you still have to use your drugs, if you have to use something to calm your body, that's okay. <laughs> Don't give up the thing that allows you to feel some level of sanity, some level of comfort. If you're on ADD drugs or depression, stay on that. Just stay with that. Begin to remember that you have a vessel that needs to be cared for. And then as we take care of our, of our body, as we begin to, you know, get it out of situations, you know, don't take your body to where your parents are. If you need to do a little healing, take your body, you know, with you. Which always, you know, works well. <laughs> Take your body with you somewhere where you can give it room to relax. 
You cannot do this work if you're all tight and tensed up and then you add more tension to it. So pull it out of situations that are uncomfortable. Then do the mental work. Do the mental work. And as you begin to reprogram, I promise you, the emotional stuff's gonna surface. And then you return back to that clear energy emotion. The only thing that is uncomfortable are the emotions that we experience that we did not let move through us. That energy that's supposed to be in motion got stuck in us because we made a story about it because of our, our mind. We made up a story that that was somehow not what should have happened and our body begins to feel it. So allow the body to feel a level of relaxation. Look at the mental programming. What did I create about this story? And that energy will be back into motion and it releases. So again, there's a very logical process. Everything that happens coming in, we must do coming back. So from conception to enlightenment, it's a ride. You're on a merry-go-round. And an important thing is, this is not like we're zero, we're born here, you know, conception here, and back to death. It's not like that. It's actually a spiral. It's, an ex it's a spiral that expands. We start off here, we have little experiences, and we learn about programming, eat all your food, and then your mother controlled what you ate, and you couldn't have dessert until you finished your food, and then you got older and you said, wait a second, I'm curious, why do I have to eat my food first and then dessert? And you reprogram and you started eating dessert first before your food when you went to college. Actually, you didn't eat any more food, you just ate dessert only. And then you felt so good about that. And then you got reprogrammed when you had children and you realized, well, maybe I better add a couple carrots to my meal. So it's a constant thing that we do <laughs> all the time. The more aware you are, the faster you move through stuff. The less aware, the tighter, the more uncomfortable the situation will be. Because then you will always find yourself in a place where when you're around people who want you to eat your food first and then your dessert, you're going to be so uncomfortable. You're going to be mad and angry. That is not right. I don't want to be, do, I don't want to be told what to do. I'm a grown-up. I'm 65 years old. I'll eat my food how I want to. And it becomes a miserable experience. When you become aware, then you go to Granny's house. Granny, I know you like for me to eat my food before my dessert, but guess what? I'm a grown-up now. I'm going to eat both together. Oh, actually, I'm going to eat my dessert. I'm going to skip the food. It doesn't matter. I know it's not going to really hurt my body. I appreciate you taking care of me and you wanting me to do it a certain way, but I, don't, I choose not to do it that way. You can begin to stand up for what you want without making other people wrong. And you move into the space that you're totally awake and you see that everything is absolutely perfect. And when Granny wants to force you to eat your, your food before your dessert, you recognize she's coming from her programming. Bless her, love her, accept her. It works for her. It gives her a level of control. But you don't have to do it. Or you could do it her way knowing it's not a big deal. There's a peace that comes through expanding our awareness and moving into that space of recognition that all truly is well but you can't get to all as well until you look at what caused you to believe that it wasn't first got to look at it any thoughts comments will you do me a favor and yeah. read the points again I just I know that be ready you have to be ready mm -hmm. you have got to get past the resistance and after the resistance, we need to look at the old wound. Mm -hmm. We need to go back and look at see what, what was created, what happened, what was the situation. There, there's a level of entering it, and actually you don't have to force it, it just happens naturally. When the wound is ready to be looked at, it will flash before your eyes. The moment in time, the situation will come right up to you. And the reason we resist it is because we're not ready to see it. But the readiness allows for the resistance to drop, which allows the wounding to show up. It will show up. And then you have to learn your lesson from it. What was this teaching me? And always, 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 always. Did I say always? Always. It allows you to see how you gave your power to others because that's part of the game. You have to feel like a disempowered child before you can become an adult that reclaims your power. So the lesson is, I just, I was a child. 
and I had to do what my parents said I had to do. And then I believed them because I was a child and they were the parents, so I, I believed the story. And after you do that, that learning, there's an acceptance. And the accepting that they did what they did because it's all that they could do is what returns us back to that wholeness. Acceptance, forgiveness, all, all, all that is mixed in. Yes. So with the wounding, you said that it'll, when it's ready to be, because I was asking you earlier about trying to go back and remember things, you don't necessarily have to do that. It'll come to you. It will come to you when you're ready and you stop resisting. Okay. So the minute you say, you know what, I am, I am ready to move through this. Life, bring me these circumstances that will allow me to see it. <laughs> and they, they, it will show up. You, you'll meet somebody who triggers something in you, and the triggering is the invitation to go look for what's happening. Because I, I have a saying, every irritation is an invitation to see where I need to be healed. Because if, if you were whole, it wouldn't irritate you. So if every irritation now, in, in a way that you, are, you, you feel excited, oh my gosh, I can't wait. What's behind fear number two? What's behind fear number six? And you go into that place of discomfort like an explorer trying to find what is in there for me and all of a sudden it becomes revealed you don't have to force it to be you can't it'll be revealed to you but what allows you to go in that direction is just saying I'm ready another word for being ready is surrender surrender into your freedom it's really cool challenging to do it's hard it can be, you know, a, a very difficult thing to happen if you believe that it's going to be hard and difficult. If you say, I'm, I'm, I'm open, the universe take me gently, chances are you'll experience that. But in you must go if you want to get out of that story. Isn't it kind of interesting? All these dichotomies, you got to go in to get out. <laughs> it, it's... it's amazing uh, and one thing that we didn't really talk about that I want to make sure that we that we did it a little bit with you but I want to make sure that's really clear the reason I put such an emphasis on how does your body feel is because our thoughts create how we feel so if you want to change how you feel about life you need to change the meaning that you have assigned to life if relationships are about responsibility and conditional and I lose who I am, you will feel pretty tight and tense. You will experience that in your relationship. If you want to change your experience of relationships, you've got to change what your meaning of the relationship. Relationships are about respect. It's about me bringing myself wholly into it. It's about not ex expecting somebody else to bring me joy. Your body will feel light because it's true. And then you will experience that. Our body never lies. Anything that causes tension is nothing more than life's way of saying you're believing something that is not true about you. Isn't that kind of cool? That when our body gets tense, it's just life saying you're believing something that's not true. Believe the truth and you'll be at ease. I'm ugly. Oh, you're believing something that's not true. Believe something that is true and you'll be at ease. I'm perfect. I am not smart. You're believing something that's not true. I'm as smart as I, I need to be. And then you relax. So every time you get tight and tense, you're believing something that is not true about you. So what is the truth about us? This, what we came in with, remember? Whole and complete and funny and creative and innocent and playful and joyful and, and all those wonderful things. All we need to do, remember the truth and we're set free to enjoy the ride. Pretty simple, huh? We make so much out of this. We make it so complicated. The mind loves to make it complicated because we got rewarded when we did the hard work. Because people who work really hard, people who get all those extra degrees, people who really prove themselves, they get the big reward. And as we're seeing, not true. The people who, are, who get the best rewards are the ones who are just having a good time. Because the reward is not about money. It's about feeling.
feeling at ease with who we are. It's about feeling free to be ourselves. That's the reward. Any thoughts, comments, questions? Money would be nice too. But here's the thing. When you are when you are completely living from a place of being whole and complete, we all have a gift that we came to bring to this world. Every single one of us has a talent that is completely unique and it fits somewhere in the whole scheme. When you get back to that place of being whole and complete, you tap into that inner gift that you're here to, re to release. And when it's done without attachment to having to get something back, what shows up will blow your mind. And I, again, I am speaking from experience. It, it is absolutely unbelievable. I am watching other people that I coach as they let go of resistance, things show up. Job opportunities, um, new relationships, just things show up. It's absolutely amazing. So it does come. There is nothing wrong with money. Actually, there's all kinds of wonderful stuff about money. But when you think that you need it to be OK, you're at the mercy of money. When you're OK and then all of a sudden it shows up, you're just playing with it. Big difference. Well, this is pretty much the completion of my presentation. So any comments or questions? What is this whole presentation called? Well, <laughs> I, I've called it different things to what see what, what people, you know, depending on the audience. Yes, that's a great question. What, do you what, do you, what, do you, what do you call it? Living your life. <laughs> okay, living your life. I've called it here, I call it awakening consciousness because it is truly becoming conscious of who we are. It is about waking up to the truth that there is a consciousness that comes in and it does forget its consciousness so it can have the human ride and awaken to itself. So we expand into this consciousness and so I call it that at the Spiritual Living Center because they talk about consciousness here. Other places, I've called it the soul's journey because it is the journey of the soul. The soul comes in and has this journey. Um, I've called it the ascension of the soul because the soul really descends into the place where we, it forgets it's a soul and it needs to ascend. So I've called it all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, eventually I'm just going to call it one thing. It's just the power of awareness, just becoming aware because we reclaim our power and become aware of what we don't know. Because like Einstein, a wonderful quote. You cannot solve a problem with the same mind that created it. So to expand outside of our little life, we have to become aware of what else is outside of our little life and not try and figure out how do I fix my issues with the same issues that I was thinking when I created the discomfort that I'm in. So that's a wonderful question. I don't know if that helps in any way. <laughs> if anybody else has a different answer for what we should call this, I'm I, open I to suggestions. I actually described it the other day as the the human, or how do I say, human being on a spiritual journey and a spiritual being on a human journey, mm -hmm. all together. <laughs> 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 I think that's a little long for a title, but you know, hey. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I have thought of, you know, sharing this with people who are on just a human journey and it doesn't quite, it, it, it doesn't, so it loses not. itself completely. So my, my audience is somebody who's already on a journey. Um, now, my ideal clients will be the ones who are right here, the ones who think they already know it all. They've had a taste of, of being able to create, but they, they are still in that space of I know it all, and they're wanting to control life from I, the I know it all. Usually, they're the ones who are running most of the spiritual centers <laughs> that I know, because they got it all figured out. Um, so anyway, so that would be a fun fun group to play with. <laughs> but I tend to get the people who are open, truly, truly open to already the resistance is down, there is an opening, there is a readiness, and they're wanting to look at what's in there. And one of the things that I don't enjoy doing anymore that much, hardly ever anymore, is looking at the wounds because there are other people who do that way better than I do, and they're passionate about that as we were talking about um, one of our friends. 
I, I like to show people the big journey so that they can kind of, it, it's kind of like Eckhart Tolle. He doesn't stop to teach people about the wound. He's just saying, hey, you're more than what you think you are. He's just pointing you to that isness. That's it. Yeah. There, there is an opportunity out there grander than you have imagined because you are looking at it from your human mind. <coughs> if you expand to the mind of source, it's a vision beyond your wildest dreams. Truly. So if I can stand as, a, as an example of what's possible, not only through my life, but also just, just through listening to the work, then I've done my part. And I can only share this because I went through this. I looked at all my wounds. I saw where I gave away my power. When I said my dad abandoned me when I was 10 because he didn't, you know, he left our family, I realized I abandoned me when I made him responsible for my happiness. That was part of reclaiming my power. He left because he was married to my mother. I would have left her too. <laughs> you know, I was married to her. I'd have, I'd have left too, way sooner. <laughs> I would have waited for four children. So, compassion, acceptance for him. He did the best that he could. Man deserves a medal for staying as long as he did. Crazy, crazy man. So, if we stay in this space, if we don't do the work that is necessary to move over, we just live in a mind-made prison. And we will be forever imprisoned by our thoughts. Our thoughts will set our limits. Our thoughts will let us know what to stay away from because you know we're afraid. Our thoughts will keep us from expressing our greatness. And truly, we will live in a mind-made prison. A bunch of invisible thoughts <coughs> keep us stuck in a place where we're playing small. They keep us in a box. So that is it. To me, life is fun and easy if you decide that you want it to be fun and easy. Thank you all so much for coming. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful that you spent your day here with me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ooh,